that God, in his infinite wisdom, continues to guide us as we continue with our study. Yesterday, we started on verse 5, where it indicates a switch from a shepherd to a host of a banquet. David now switches from God being a shepherd to God becoming a host in a banquet. And what we learned yesterday is that a banquet is a sign of communion, a sign of togetherness, a sign of like-mindedness, a sign of working together as one person. Because you cannot sit at a table with an enemy. That meal will not move on well. But when you sit at the table and your host cannot be your enemy, it must be a friend. Therefore, uh, David realizing the providence of God, the protection of God, the defense of God, the restoration of God, and the loving care of God, he shifts from a shepherd, shepherding sheep, to a host of a banquet. In this banquet, usually banquets are signs of celebration. And it, in my understanding, David must have been celebrating an achievement in his physical and spiritual realm. He's working with the Lord there must be a celebration. And we realize that David for sure was forward looking to the coming of the Messiah in the first place. In the second place, for the second coming of Jesus to take us home where we shall celebrate in the heavenly places. And therefore, at the same time in the physical, David is looking at how God has guided him, at how God has led him through his life from being a shepherd boy to becoming a king of Israel. And God is trying, is hosting him before his enemies, some of whom included Saul, some of whom included the Philistines, some of whom included uh, other people who were again, such as Absalom and to mention but a few. Therefore, I want us to come to the point where we can say that the Lord is good all the time because he is hosting us to a banquet as victors in this world. We come to the understanding that the Lord is good because he is going to celebrate with us when we overcome this world. And we need also to understand that if you are to overcome this world, you have to work with the Lord. You have to walk with the Lord. You have to follow his guidance. You have to follow his uh, lead as a shepherd. At the same time, he will host you in a banquet which will be celebrating your victory over this world. Now, when we follow the guidance of God, the good shepherd, he will turn out to be a host of a banquet. And it will be a celebration of victory in the heavenly places. For you have followed the shepherd faithfully by his word and by his spirit. Therefore, victory is yours. Now, let's come to the study of this morning. Because I already touched part A of 
verse 5 of the Psalm 23 yesterday. Now when we come to part B, you will see that the psalmist says, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. You remember we started with you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. It should be noted that it is customary in the Jewish culture. When you host somebody to a banquet, when you host a friend, a relative to a banquet, you provide water for washing the feet and you also anoint their head with oil. It was customary. This one, we can look backwards in the book of Genesis chapter 18, verse 4, you will discover when Abraham hosted his guests, he provided water to wash their feet. And it is not mentioned whether he provided, um, uh, whether he provided uh, oil to anoint his, their head, but he provided water to wash the feet. And in that case, this psalmist is looking at that tradition and custom. It is not only indicated in Genesis chapter 18. We also see the same happen when Jesus visits Simon's house. In Luke chapter 44, verse Ah, Luke chapter 7, sorry, verse 44. You will see that Jesus is hosted on the banquet and Simon failed to do that customary work. However, a lady shows up. In the book of John, this lady is assumed to be Mary Magdalene. And he recognizes Jesus and he comes in to anoint him as if Simon failed to recognize Jesus. So he decides to, 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 to what should I say, to complain. Why is this woman doing this? It should have been me. But Simon had failed to be a generous host. He had failed to be generous host to Jesus. And Jesus comes and he tells him, you see, why should you complain when this lady has washed my feet with her tears and she has anointed me with oil? And you have not done that. And therefore, it was an insult to Jesus because it is customary for a guest to anoint their, for a host, sorry, to anoint a guest. Therefore, David in Psalms 23, verse 5, part B, is indicating that God is going to host him in the heavenly places, on a banquet after his victory. Not only him, but even you and me will be hosted on the banquet when we become victorious over the trials and tribulations in this world. I think when you read from Revelation chapter 3, verse 21, you will discover that God is going to host us as anointed ones now, because it has two parts. The first part is customary to the children of Israel, where your guest is offered water to wash his feet, and you anoint them with oil as a sign of hospitality. As a sign of hospitality. 
But the second part is whereby anointment is an initiation into the royal status. My understanding is David also realizes that God is going to initiate him into the royal realm, the royal status. This status is in one David being hosted in what we say he's hosted no what he's anointed as a king of Israel but secondly he's looking forward to be anointed as a king in the heavenly kingdom this one is strengthened by the promise in revelation chapter 3:21 the promise to the Laudation Church, if they follow through to the requirements of the children of God, to the requirements of the people of God, God is going to host them to the throne. Can we read the Revelation chapter 3, verse 21? Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. What does it say? It says, to the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. The psalmist is trying to also indicate royal initiation into a royal status. Brothers and sisters, I want this morning to tell you that when you follow the guidance of God, when you realize that you are a sinner and you repent your sins and you are restored to the original status, you remember he restores our soul. That is restoring us to the original status of being perfect as the Father in heaven is perfect. So God is also going to restore us to that original status. That is after you repent your sins. God will prepare a banquet for you in the heavenly places. He will anoint you with oil so that you are initiated into a royal status and the promise by Jesus and God himself in Revelation chapter 3.21 will come to pass. You will sit with him on the thrones of the heavenly places. But it does not stop there. If you read carefully, you will also discover that your cup will overflow. What does it mean that my cup overflows? Definitely, the psalmist is trying to speak of the God, the godly blessings, the gracious blessings of God. When you walk with the Lord, when you commune with the Lord in one accord, you will have blessings overflowing blessings here and now on earth blessings in the hereafter in the heavenly kingdom where you will be happy here on earth with the privileges of a son or daughter of god but at the same time blessings in the heavenly places where you will rule with our Lord and you will sit with him on the throne. Therefore, David is indicating the generosity of our God, being generous as a host 
to the banquet. Being generous as our God who wants us to overcome this world of temptation. Who wants us to inherit the kingdom of God. Brothers and sisters, this morning, I want to encourage you to walk with the Lord in his footsteps. Because he has left us an example through Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, but he became sin for our sake. And he overcame sin. Even when he was crucified on the cross in our place, he overcame so that we have that great hope of overcoming this world. That's why we take time to wake up in the morning to come and worship him, to come and praise him, to come and listen to his word, because we have that great hope of overcoming. And we are enjoying in his blessings here and the, in, the, in the hereafter. I want to pray with you so that you can proclaim like the service that God prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. He anoints my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. That is my prayer, that you will be one like David, who will pronounce like he pronounced in the Psalm 23, specifically verse 5. Thank you for listening to me. God bless you so that your cup may overflow with blessings, so that you may be hosted by God in the heavenly places, so that you can rule with God together as promised in Revelation chapter 3, 21. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you very much because you are generous to us. We thank you very much because you love us. We thank you very much because you are a God who wants everybody to enjoy themselves. How I pray that with your word and with your Holy Spirit, you continue guiding us so that we become better people in this world, so that we enjoy in your blessings in this world, so that we also enjoy the blessings of the heavenly kingdom. As we go out, to do our businesses. We pray for the blessings of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to be with us now and forevermore. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen.